Here come the Umbral Blades, hurtling through the dungeon like a streak of... Actually, I'd rather not say. Arriving at the first chest before their opponent. We can see Star Blitzer, Rin Skitter Scuttle, prying the lid off, and... Oh, oh no. Looks like he's lost a lot more than a few singed whiskers. Better luck next time, old chap. But my, oh my, those chests are truly wonders of dwarven craftsmanship. Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. So, having painted up the portals, in today's episode, we're going to be painting up the next part of our Dungeon Bowl adventure, the chests. Opening these up is a necessary risk in Dungeon Bowl. Unlike in Blood Bowl, where the kickoff can determine where the ball is going to land, in Dungeon Bowl, the ball always starts in one of the six chests. Neither player knows which chest contains the ball, and as Dungeon Bowl ends after just a single touchdown, it's a real advantage to find the chest with the ball in first. But there's a catch, as all the others that don't have a ball in contain a bomb that will blow up in the player's face as soon as the lid is lifted. So five out of six times it's a bomb and a free pass to the Apothecary's tent, and one in six it's the ball and a chance to go for glory. Today's video is going to show how I paint these up and also demonstrate a technique called Object Source Lighting or OSL. OSL is a way of showing the lighting in your scene and how various objects affect it. In this case, I'm going to be using the flame on the top of each bomb and the reflections off of the gold coins contained in each chest. Now that does leave one final chest, which is the one that normally is sculpted with the ball. I'm actually going to be doing something a bit different here, so leave your guesses in the comments down below as to what you think I'm going to be putting in that chest. Now I've already built all of the chests, but there's one thing that bugs me. Unless I manage to paint all of them exactly the same, I'm always going to know which one contains the ball and which ones are bombs. Outside of a gentleman's agreement to never look too closely at the chests, there's no real way of avoiding this. Now I've come up with a solution to this. What I'm going to do is put a topper inside of the chest that has the ball in. I'm going to make this and paint it up so that it can be put in any of the chests, and this way I won't know which of the chests has the ball in, even if I'm sneaky enough to find that sculpted detail. I originally conceived making the topper out of card or foam, but after doing a few examples, I realised that this wasn't really going to cut it. I had a brainwave. Why not sculpt a pillow for the ball to sit on out of millipet? In this way, I can have it fit exactly inside of my chests, and also I can sculpt some little details onto it so it really sells the effect. I started by mixing my milliput. This comes in two different long tubes. You need equal parts of each, which you mix together with your hands for at least five minutes. I laid a piece of tin foil inside of one of the chests, and squashed my piece of milliput into it. In this way, once the milliput is dry, I can take it out and remove the tin foil without getting it stuck to the inside of the chest. I then decided to try on the lid of my chest just to be sure, and thank god I did because what ended up happening is that there were actually little tabs for the lid to attach to inside of the chest. I wanted to make sure that the lid would close over this, as I was then able to remove that little bit of milliput from around those tabs. With Crisis Averted, I also removed a little bit of the milliput from the middle using a toothpick, and then slotted a ball inside. I once again put on the lid of the chest just to make sure that it would fit, and once I was happy, I left the milliput to dry. Once the milliput was dry and hardened, there was still some stuck to the lid of the chests, so I got a toothpick and scraped this off before continuing. Leaving it to harden, this takes about three or four hours, I decided to prime the rest of the chests with black primer. Next, I came in with gold paint and painted all of the coins on the inside. I wasn't being too neat here because I knew that I was going to come in and clean up a bit later on. For painting the outside, I slapped on Rhinox Hide over all of the wooden panels before going in with my silver paint around all of the silver details around the edges of the chests. I then also applied some Retributor armor onto the Blood Bowl symbols on the top of each chest. Make sure here that you go around the edges where they've got those little spikes as you may need to tilt your model in order to be able to get into all those hard to reach areas. When my base paint's applied, I then applied an all over wash of non oil over the outside of the chests. Non oil over silver is already, you know, a big part of my repertoire, but on the wooden areas, it really helped to give definition to those kind of cracks in the wood or the grain where the wood might be. I then got a dry brush of Scrag Brown, wiped pretty much all of the paint off, and used this to highlight up the wooden areas. This again contrasted with all of those deep recessed non oil areas and just gave it a really nice wood effect. Over the silver areas, I took some Vallejo Metal Silver and dry brushed that on in much the same way. This was probably the messiest step, which I had to come back in and sort out with Rhinox Hide. I then also base coated inside of the chests, making sure to hit all the walls with black paint as well as the bomb inside. And then it was onto the fun part, the fire effect. 
Now for this, I base coated the entirety of the fuse and the flame using rake burn. This would give me a nice light colour to work from, and it's really important when you're trying to get those object source lighting effects to have a really light colour onto which to layer all of your other tones. Next, I went in with Uriel Yellow, focusing this around the top of the candle flame. Then I came in with a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Uriel Yellow, focusing this towards the top of the flame. Lastly, on the very top third of the flame, I took Pure Evil Sun Scarlet, just to give that sort of reddish tint at the top of the flame. When you're painting flames, it's really important to realise, just like you learn in school, the hottest part of the flame is at the bottom, and it gets less and less hot as you move outwards. On the fuse on the top of the bomb, over the wraith bone, I layered Seraphim Sepia Wash, just to give it a bit more of a yellowed appearance. I then went over and drew tiny little lines using thinned down Rhinox Hide, just again to indicate that this is a rope that is burning, or a string, or something like that. As I was painting the flame, I decided to also use those colours to create my rudimentary OSL effect. I took my Uriel Yellow and applied this just to the very closest coins, which would be closest to the flame. I then applied the orange colour to some a little bit further away. And then, using pure Evil Sun Scarlet, I painted pretty much anything with a thinned down layer that would be in sight of the candle flame. This means you don't have to worry too much about getting those coins right at the bottom of the chest, as they're in shadow anyway. And with that, that's all the chests with bombs done. Okay, so that just leaves the burning question, what did I do with the one with the sculpted ball in the bottom? I decided on some Skaven trickery. So maybe they'd gotten in and filled the ball with warp stone, making it incredibly volatile, and as soon as anyone lifted the lid off the chest, it was going to explode. Probably even worse than if you'd opened a bomb. To do this, I used the same OSL effect as described earlier, but this time using greenish tones. I decided to paint up the whole ball using moot green, this is a really vibrant green colour, which gives us that idea of it being sort of abnormal or kind of ethereal. I then highlighted this towards the centre and the seams of the ball using a mixture of moot green and white, getting towards pure white right by those seams. This should give the idea that the energy is bursting outwards from inside of the ball. I used the same OSL techniques to have my moot green thinned down on some of the coins on the other side of the chest. The very last thing I did was paint the topper for my Dungeon Bolt chests. I base coated this black and then painted Vallejo grey onto the whole of the ball. With that done, I took some bronze colour, in this case Balthazar gold, the most confusingly named paint in the world, and painted this onto some of the rings around the ball and also onto the little sculpted dwarf detail on the top. Next, I wanted to paint the plush velvet cushion only befitting such an important object. I started with Xerius purple, which I layered over all of the pillow. Next, I shaded over everything with non-oil. With my non-oil applied, I highlighted up the purple using a mix of Xerius purple and Demonette height, and the grey using a little bit of extra white into that grey. And with that, my Dungeon Bowl chests are done! Make sure that you like the video if you did enjoy it, and also share it with your friends so they can see it as well. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>